So hey, hello everyone, and welcome to one of our Meet the Entrepreneur series interviews. I'm thrilled uh, to have everyone here, and I'm really excited about the interview that I'm doing today, as I've been wanting to do it for a really long time. So just a little a bit of an introduction to Formula Botanica. We are an award-winning online natural and organic cosmetic science school, and you can find us over at formulabotanica.com. And if you fancy becoming a organic cosmetic formulator, then check out our free sample class, um, and that will give you an idea of what it's like to formulate um, different things. So head over to formulabotanica.com and check that out. Uh, so today I'm interviewing Raphael from Boreal Folk and I am so excited as I said earlier about this interview. Um, Raphael is a Formula Botanica student and graduate and we've been following her fabulous Instagram page for quite a long time now. So if you haven't already checked it out then go ahead and have a look. But without further ado, welcome Raphael. Thank you so much, Gemma, for having me on the show this morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you could make it. And um, I know that sometimes um, where you are, um, internet and signal can be a little bit patchy. So please forgive us if there's any breaks in the audio. Um, so I just thought for the benefit of our um, viewers, you could introduce yourself and explain who you are and what you do. Yes, absolutely. My name is Raphael Gagnon, and I am the co-owner and formulator of Boreal Folk Apothecary. And we have a little natural skincare line that is made with wild harvested plants that are native to Canada. And my partner and I, we live a little bit of an alternative lifestyle. We've always been very adventurous. And our home is a 1967 Greyhound bus that's been converted into a little tiny home on wheels. And in 2016, we converted a cargo trailer into what we call the Wilderness Lab. And this trailer is our mobile studio that we create our line of skincare products in. And it's towed behind the bus. And we are very inspired by... Um, mainly the boreal forest. I do love all of our forests in Canada, but the boreal forest is the forest that has stolen my heart while I was tree planting for 10 years during my 20s. That was my job. And so I became very fascinated with the wild plants that are growing mm -hmm. in these areas that get cut down where the, 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 cut, the clear cuts are. Um, those first weeds that pop up um, such as nettles, we've got fireweed, yarrow, plantain, uh, all these beautiful herbs that are, are growing abundantly in our forests. Um, we use to make our, our natural uh, line of skincare products. So that's kind of an nutshell what we're up to. <laughs> so basically, you travel around Canada in a converted bus with your mobile lab, wild harvesting ingredients for yes. your natural skincare line. <laughs> Exactly. So where did it all go so horribly wrong then? <laughs> yeah, oh God, that's that's amazing. A little bit far when you say it out loud, <laughs> exactly. but it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I mean, I just like I said in the introduction, I Lorraine and I both love watching all your adventures on your Instagram page. Um. And, you know, just find it so interesting that you've managed to craft this lifestyle for yourself. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about this nomadic lifestyle and, and why you chose to live this way. And then also I was hoping that you could give us a little bit of a tour around your wilderness lab. Absolutely. Yeah. So I've always been very close to nature. I come from a family of people who were fishermen, who were hunters, who were um, working in the reforestation industry. And I just always had a very fond love for being out in the wilderness, for canoeing. Um, like I've said previously, my for, for a decade, I worked as a tree planter. So I planted 2.3 million trees over my nine, nine summers of tree planting. Um, so I spent a lot of time out in, in the forest and I just love being out there. And when I met my partner, he, he's also not this city type. And um, I was also a world traveler for about 
um, eight years, I would plant trees uh, in the summers, and then I would spend a lot of time overseas learning languages and working and traveling and just discovering um, other cultures and their customs and forgotten traditions. I'm a really um, big advocate of the uh, living slow and uh, just remembering these traditions that you know, only in the last two, three generations have they been forgotten. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, really fascinated by, yeah, just the slower way of living. And for us, um, living in a bus has definitely enabled us to go to a lot of uh, these just beautiful wild places in Canada that um, we love visiting. And uh, one of our favorite ones, for example, is in the foothills in Al between Alberta and British Columbia. And it's just right in the middle of the wilderness. And it's one of the only places that still has wild horses in mm -hmm. North America. And where we park our bus, we'll wake up in the morning and we're just surrounded by herds of wild horses. And um, these areas are so rich in botanical life. And there's just so much plant diversity out there. Um, so it's a great place to do our work as well as uh, just just live and, and really kind of live this slower life that we really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it sounds so, for, so nice. <laughs> yeah, really, really important to just stay authentic to ourselves. We knew that we wanted to start a business and I've been so fascinated with the natural skincare world for the last 10 years. and. Um, I knew that I didn't really want to settle down, so to speak, and you know, live in a city or choose a town. Even I was, I was, uh, yeah, just totally enamored by the idea of being nomadic and creating a business that suits us instead of wanting to settle down and you know, choose a town to live in to start Oriel Folk. We said to ourselves, why not? build this brand that really is a reflection of ourselves and our lifestyle and our ethos and just what we're interested in at the moment. So that's why we converted the Wilderness Lab into, into what it is. And um, so I can show you yes. around. So this is our 99 square foot. It's a cargo trailer. So if you can picture a, I'll just move my chair out of the way here. Um, if you can picture a white cargo trailer, um, it was converted. So everything is handmade by Mark and myself. So we have in our trailer, our, there's two sections. So this is my formulating corner here. Mm -hmm. So we've got our stainless steel countertops. We have our water tank, which is actually on the top of the roof, along with solar panels. So if we are off grid, um, we have about 700 watts of solar that we can generate. And I don't know if it's easier if I open up this light, maybe this is my other light that makes everything a little bit brighter. But we have um, mainly an anhydrous line of skincare products. So we make things like soaps and shampoo bars and um, facial serums, face oils, body butters, this is my soap curing rack here. And we cure our soaps for 30 to 60 days in these racks here. And I can have about 1,200 bars at a time. So these are our nettle and mint shampoo bars wow. um, that are currently curing here. And so that's where our soaps cure. And then, um, yeah, currently I actually have some in the molds that are just here. So this is our um, juniper and birch soap and shampoo bars. So those I made yesterday. And so this little corner here is our yeah formulating station. I've got um, up top and down below uh, just lots of storage for pots and pans and anything that we need and then our essential oils and tinctures and herbal extracts all go up on the top here and then we've got in the back lots of storage I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. or if, if the light is too bright just let me know if I need to adjust anything um, but we've got yeah lots of storage which ties up when we are traveling so these don't move um, 
And then we have both uh, off-grid heating elements. And then if we're, like currently we're in the back of a farm, so we have access to power. And, um, but this is what I use when we are off-grid. It's a little propane Dickinson. And these are used in sailboats for people who live in sailboats, and that's what heats their space, um, <clears throat> yeah, when they are out on the ocean. So we've got, yeah, lots of room for our, uh, any, any raw ingredients in the back. So we've got lots of our oils and butters and uh, lots of our plants as well. We do distillations of hydrosol as well. So we do have, um, yeah, lots of our house distilled hydrosols. Uh, and then lots of plant matter as well. So these are all of our jars of plants that we uh, that we have and use during the year. So we've got lots of these here. And then this corner here is more of our shipping and, and handling corner um, and our office as well. So we do all of our own labels for printing. So we'll print our labels here. Uh, when we get an online order, we have our, our stock in this little cabinet here. So we just ship everything um, yeah, in this corner here. And then we do our yeah, product labeling and any computer work um, in this little corner. So that's kind of how the lab is divided. And it's just been such a, an amazing space, like 99 square feet. is not a lot of, um, for us it's just been such an amazing little workshop to create our entire brand in and uh, yeah so that's the wilderness lab. Wow it looks amazing now can you just tell us a story about once your lab was stolen? Yes yes so actually after three months of building the wilderness lab I'm just gonna sit back down here mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the trailer, Vancouver is a little bit of a notorious city for theft um, when it comes to, uh, yeah, vehicles, trailers, break-ins, um, and we, I mean, we, we were kind of, we didn't know this at the time, uh, but the trailer got stolen in, yeah, the, the, at the ferry terminal um, oh in God. Vancouver. And, this was, we had just finished building it and we'd spent about six months converting uh, this because this was just an empty space. And my partner, Mark, is just an amazing uh, creator and designer and builder. And he had literally like each and every single one of these threads is, it's all hand threaded um, with an old hand threader that he piped himself. and. These are all handmade as well from sheet metal that they use to make cars. So he literally handcrafted everything. Like each piece of steel has been hand bent. And that's why it really took us so much time to, uh, to convert. We, we put so much love into it. And, um, and it was just devastating. After three months, we went to, from British Columbia to Quebec and back, which is about 1200 kilometers it's a it's you know it's a really big country so we had spent the fall while crafting and doing a few shows across Canada and then we got back to the west coast and our trailer was stolen and it was just really really heart-wrenching um to have also um our whole business is self-funded yeah. so when I was a tree planter um I saved my money for the last several years that I was planting trees and What's interesting about that is that you get paid per tree. So in the tree planting world, it's not an hourly job, it's called piecework, and you get paid per item planted, and it's 10 cents per tree that you get. So can you imagine, for seven years, I was saving literally my dimes <laughs> to, to yeah. start a business, and, um, and I had invested all of my savings into the build of the trailer, and... and when it went missing, not only did the business go missing, all of a sudden I had no business, but I had also lost all of my savings from, you know, the last several years. So I was just devastated. And um, I, sh I had sh shared it on Instagram. Yeah, the fact I remember. That the trailer got stolen and, you know, just to keep it up. Yeah, for, for people who were in 
Facebook, Facebook page and it kind of went viral on in, in, in the region. So in Vancouver, um, I had a lot of uh, news companies contact me, the Canadian CBC contacted me as well. Mm -hmm. And they asked me if I would be willing to come uh, to the Vancouver News at six. Uh, so just to be broadcasted on TV. And of course I said yes. And so when I was telling my story, and this is actually on my, on, this is the day of my 29th birthday. Like this all happened <laughs> around my 29th birthday. And so I'm here I am, you know, on the CBC, it's my 29th birthday and I'm literally crying to the world that my business was stolen and has vanished. Like I, I have no business anymore, right? So um, a lady who was watching the news called me about five minutes after it had aired to tell me that the trailer was in her condominium parking lot, um, just uh, near the ferry terminal in, wow. in Vancouver. And so it's really the fact that everybody shared my story and um, that it, it kind of, you know, we got it back within three days of it being stolen. So it was, it was all pretty quick. And we had, uh, the trailer was in great condition. I was very thankful that it was not trashed or, damaged in any way it had been opened and of course the thieves took every everything of value that they mm -hmm. could see that quick quick item um, my partner is also a coppersmith so he had just finished the week prior building a beautiful copper still that we used to do our artisan distillation um, so unfortunately they had taken that and a, and a few other things but in general uh, everything stayed as is so I was just really thankful to have at least all of our all of my books, uh, you know, that are signed yeah. by my favorite teachers and herbalists and, um, you know, those things that were really sentimental to me. I was really, really sad to have, have seen them gone, but everything was, was intact. So I was very, very That's happy when we found it. Yeah, I bet you were. You must have been absolutely relieved. I remember yeah. seeing the Instagram post and being like, oh my gosh, how could this happen? Yeah, it's really amazing. Like I, I really love social media for that reason, it really brings people together. And, um, you know, you're, I had strangers write to me saying that they actually shed a tear when they read about the wilderness lab being stolen. And, you know, people that I've never met who, who were really emotionally affected by it. And, um, you know, everyone was lending their hand and just offering anything that they could, you know, to help us along the way. So it was just, yeah, a really powerful experience. And, um, yeah, we don't go through Vancouver too often with the, the trailer anymore. So. Yes. <laughs> we like to keep it in the woods. <laughs> Talk to you and hide. Yeah, I bet you do. I bet you're like super careful. I was just thinking who would steal a massive trailer? Like, Yeah, well, it happens. It happens a lot. Often trailers have side-by-sides, like uh, big, big motor vehicles or tools in it. So I would, Im I would imagine that these people thought that we had, you know, tools or um, quads, things like that, that are easy to steal. But I, I secretly would have loved to have seen their face when I they know. opened the door and just like so stunned and surprised to see that it's an apothecary filled with herbs and plants and all kinds of really weird things. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. It smells too, like it smells... Um, I mean, as any formulating lab, like the essential oils and the natural aromas, like there's a very strong smell in here. So I love to think that when we drive, you know, we leave this beautiful aroma and waft of, of uh, fresh smelling. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so yeah, we're just so, so thankful to have yeah. it back and just to have been able to resume our quite, quite easily and quite quickly after the theft as well. Yeah. So. Thank goodness for you guys. So just thinking yeah. about your products, so <laughs> I know you showed us your lovely little um, storage unit where you have your finished products. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how you actually, when you thought about the concept of the business sort of fitting around your lifestyle and your ethos and everything, yeah. what you thought about how you were going to sell your products and how you've gone about that. I mean, how do people find you? Um, yeah, so we've had 
it's been a little bit funny over the years. We've changed a lot. Like we've been in business since 2015. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the, with the wilderness mod that launched in 2016. So we're, we're very, very new and every year has been so different than the previous year. So it's been so much learning and, uh, it's, yeah, it's been just such an amazing journey to, to grow with and Boreal Folk, um, we've mainly, uh, focused on face-to-face -face sales. Um, so that was really our main target starting out we love going to farmers markets that's how we started uh, in 2016 and 2015 was going to farmers markets and then going to bigger craft shows so we you know in the cities that we would frequent we would um make a tour out of it actually so we would um kind of formulate a vending and wild crafting tour where we would chase seasons and different plants uh, throughout the regions that we wanted to be in. And then we would stop in cities along the way to do different markets. And those markets have grown over the years. Um, in 2018, we just completed uh, a route throughout Canada where it's all of the biggest craft shows um, and artisan handmade markets throughout the, the country. So we did all of those from British Columbia to Ontario. And, uh, and so we've mainly focused on, on face to face sales. I love meeting people, um, because I spend, uh, my time distilling, going out into the wilderness, wild crafting sustainably, a lot of these medicinal weeds. Um, so we don't, we don't harvest anything that's endangered or any slow growing plant species. Um, so we really focus on uh, plants that have that grow abundantly in big plant colonies and we sustainably harvest them. So for me, I spend a lot of time either extracting the scent of a plant uh, via distillation or solvent extraction or um, plant infusion. So I'm so already invested in my product that to see the customer smell it is for me like my greatest joy. I love seeing people pick up um, one of our products and it immediately bring them back to, you know, picking wild roses with their grandmother, for example, during their childhood or hiking in their favorite places throughout um, the mountains or, or wherever they spent, you know, their, their teenagehood. And I have a lot of people who immediately get brought back to a place that was a long time ago in their memory and they're just blown away by the fact that in a split second by by smelling my product it it, it transported them into this memory and place and so i love i love that connection that i have with our customers and for people to come and actually um, smell and experience our brand is for me so important so the last few years we've mainly uh, focused on face-to-face -face sales and um, we had our, our website launched in 2016 so with Instagram as well the help of Instagram and Facebook we've uh, we, we also do online online marketing but um, we don't run ads or anything so that's just a very organic um, organic you know, just growth for people who follow us on Instagram and enjoy our story and want to, um, want to experience Royal Folk, you know, that's there. If, if they want to have a, a place in online order anywhere in the world, uh, which I think is really important as well to have. And, uh, and now we're slowly accepting stockists as well. So okay. um, it's something that we did not do for the first two, three years um, when we were really building the brand, we didn't have any stockists. And now we have about six or seven. So we're starting to take on uh, more stockists as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it's just so interesting to think that even a unique business model like your own can still follow kind of slightly traditional routes to market. Absolutely. Yeah. I, for me, it's meeting my, my client is really important for me mm -hmm. at this stage in our, our business and um, I, I love meeting entrepreneurs and supporting other brands that I know who made the product and so I think it's important for small businesses to really get out there and meet meet your meet your customer and meet your clientele and you know share your story and um, yeah we've we've kind of gone the, tr the traditional route of 
uh, literally, you know, traveling and <laughs> going from town to town and, um, and sharing our product with people. And it's, it's really been working very well for us. And um, I think that we'll keep doing it for as long as, as we can. And, and along the way, um, that's kind of our next step is to have uh, just more stockists as well so that our products are available for the people who really love our products and keep reordering them online. Um, that's the thing of not being local to anywhere is the fact that people can't necessarily come and pick up their goods yeah. or find us locally. So those main cities that we frequent quite often, I'm trying to have our products in stores so that our, our clientele there are able to pick it up um, somewhere locally. And we do as well um, have people come uh, and, and check out the lab. Uh, it's happened, it doesn't happen often just because we're, we're so remote. Um, there's not a lot of people often where we are. So yeah. if we've got some people <laughs> on Instagram who message us and they're like, Hey, you know, we know you're in this region right now. Like, uh, you know, we're happy to meet up and, and, uh, yeah, and show people. And, um, my goal for 2019 is to have one or two workshops here as well. So we'll probably be offering a one or two workshops. And that's something I want to, I want to start doing more and more, um, like in 2020 and, uh, is really have people come and, and experience the brand and, uh, just to even go out, um, wild crafting. So we'll do a little plant identification walk, come back, we'll make hydrosol and, um, and essential oils, and we'll be able to just create and, and learn um, right on site with the different plants that, uh, that we sustainably harvest. So, oh my gosh, it sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds lovely. I mean, obviously, all your strategies are really working out for you because, you know, your, your Instagram page just keeps going from strength to strength. And I, I wanted to ask you, like, do you is one of you a professional photographer? Because the photos are amazing. Um, Thank you so much, Emma. Um, no, I, I take all of my own pictures. Wow. Um, I am the photographer and it's honestly taken with my phone. Like I don't have another camera that I take pictures with. I, I have a few cameras, but to have them around with me, I, it's just not natural for me to have like, you know, a camera bag. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I've, really I think mastered the art of taking pictures with my phone and and I just love it because I always have it on me so it's, it's easier for me to record things or take pictures while I'm out in the woods harvesting and whatnot so um no so our, our Instagram page was organically grown uh from just using hashtags it's yeah just by using hashtags and um, and, and having, you know, good content and good photography and really keeping it authentic. Yeah. Um, I think that, that for me is really important. I know that some business owners get stressed out and they think that they need to post every day and they get really, they put a lot of pressure on themselves to keep their content relevant and to have the algorithm see them daily. But I really think that it doesn't have to be stressful and when you enjoy it, and you're organically just wanting to share something um, that it's it's a lot better than than to feel like you have to say something when you don't feel like it, right? Yeah. So that has yeah. been instrumental to to growing our our Instagram page. And um, yeah, it's lovely. It's a lovely place to be. Like when I see you with your basket and you talk, you know, you take pictures of the wild harvesting. You're just like it. It feels like you're there with you, you know, which yeah. I guess is, is, is what you want it to feel like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you've carved out such an amazing niche for yourself. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about your philosophy and your ethos. And we touched on that in the beginning. Yes. How that's really helped drive the brand forward. Yes. Absolutely. Um, this is one thing that Mark, my partner, is extremely good at, and he's very disciplined. Um, it is all about, I guess, this discipline. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I was first making skincare products, I would make everything from 
you know, your lavender scented body butter to your sweet orange body scrub. And, you know, I wanted to incorporate all of the scents to please everybody. And this is something that Formula Botanica has taught me as well, is that you can't be everything to everybody. And you really, really have to narrow down your niche and be disciplined in your field as well. So when Mark and I were dreaming up Boreal Folk, um, you know, Boreal Folk, the name of the business comes from the Boreal Forest and mm -hmm. folk being the people of the forest or the folklore even um, of herbalism that, um, you know, all, a lot of my teachings are from traditional um, folk herbalists. Uh, so it, it's kind of a play on word on, on that. And the fact that, um, you know, you have to really stay true to your brand and identity. So I, I slowly phased out all of the, the lavender and the patchouli and the sweet orange of our brand. And there's nothing wrong with these scents. <laughs> it's just the fact that boreal folk is not that. Mm -hmm. And someone who's looking for lavender specifically probably isn't my clientele and the fact that we were so disciplined and all of our scents that we have in the line as well as our raw ingredients are locally sourced through Canada so we use um, Canadian oils so you'll see in my line I don't have um, you know jojoba oil or um, tamanu oil or argan oil. I, I use oils that come from Canada. So we have um, things like um, black currant seed oil, red raspberry seed oil. We, we really try to use um, local oils as well as salts. So the bath salts that we have are from the prairies and it's from an ocean that was there about 300 million, million years ago that um, evaporated and it left this amazing uh, salt flat below the prairies as well as um, clay. So we use a lot of local algaes and um, that that really is part of my philosophy and my drive to have started Boreal Folk and it still inspires me to to really look at our ingredient list and, and try to stay as sustainable and, and local as we can. Um, and yeah, so I think that, you know, being disciplined and just because people like the smell of lavender, it doesn't mean that you need to make a lavender product, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really like honing in on, okay, like if we're going to have a company called Boreal Folk and we're going to be wild crafting these products, I need to stay true to the wild roses or to the black yeah. spruce or to the Labrador tea or to the bog myrtle. And that is why I believe our brand is doing so well is that it's really sets us apart and differentiates our, our brand. And it's very easily um, explained to mm -hmm. others as well. Like, you know, this is an, a Canadian iconic brand and they go out and they sustainably harvest these weeds and they create the scents from these Canadian plants and then they use Canadian uh, raw materials as well, right, in the formulation of the product. And then we try not to use any plastic as well. So everything's either in biodegradable tubes or recyclable glass. And uh, so that's a really strong point for me and my philosophy of, of the brand as well is to, to keep it as, as local and sustainable as I can and to create a very small footprint. Um, yeah. Hence, the, you know, our trailer being solar powered as well. And um, you know, only not taking 99, 99 square feet and, uh, yeah. yeah, so it's consistent. It's everything is, is kind of consistent and it stays true to, to your yeah. quality and your values. Exactly. Yeah. So did you take your formula Botanica course, um, from your trailer? I, I, yeah, I actually was living in a van. Okay. So the, the, um, yeah, I took the course while we were, uh, living nomadically. So I was living in our van um, at the time. Yeah. So the, the business started in a Purolator van. I don't know if okay. you're familiar. With, I don't know if you have them in the UK. It's, um, or FedEx, like those big white mail delivery vans. Like yeah, white vans. vans. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. So we had converted a van in 2015 into our home. And uh, 
both Mark and I had our little workshops in the back. So my corner was my formulating corner where I made mm -hmm. soap and different skincare products. And so we were living on a gold claim actually in Northern British Columbia. And we had 50 acres of land that you can lease for a year. And this um, gives you the opportunity to live on this plot of land as long as you don't build. So it's perfect for people who have tiny homes or vans. Not many people know about this. Uh, so Mark was actually panning for gold while I was out harvesting um, and foraging throughout the, the gold claim that we had. And then that's when I started making our skincare products and, you know, using locally well-crafted herbs. Uh, so, and I was also taking the course with Formula Botanica, yeah, at the time oh. in, that, in that region. So I would actually go into town and find the nearest staples and I would print all of the different, you know, the different courses and then I'd go back into the woods and study and then I'd come back to the city and then when I got connection I would take the tests and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been really, it's been really instrumental to the, the growth of our business and um, I'm so thankful to have found Formula Botanica and just to, to have given me the keys uh, and yeah, just all the knowledge that I needed to create our brand uh, with confidence and um, really focus on finding our niche and um, you know what what exactly it is that sets us apart and um, also just finding out who our target audience is as well. Yeah. Well, I'm so Thank glad you. that you <laughs> that you enjoyed it. It's it's such a unique story, you know. I know that um, obviously having that fit, you know, just what you said now about you know doing bits and pieces, and then when you had a connection, going and printing things, and then taking the tests. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So one final question: what what course did you take with us, or which courses did you take with us? I took the just the diploma in organic skincare formulation. Yeah. Yeah. So I took that and it brought me from 2015. Yeah. I, I completed it in about a year, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at other courses as well. Uh, I'm just so busy with Boreal Folk. I'm going to have to learn how to manage my time a little better so I can keep studying and learning as well as manage the business. Yeah, I yeah. bet. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> that's my next step because we're still in our early stages. So yeah. I'm wearing all the hats. Um, we did uh, hire a woman who lives um, near to where our camp is currently, and she's just fantastic. So she's been helping me since um, the spring. And uh, yeah, we've hired her on as our part time help. So it's it's great because when you do start a business, you're wearing all the hats from, you know, social media to marketing, to uh, PR, to, you know, booking, just booking the shows throughout Canada takes a lot of time yeah. and, and energy. And then the, the wild crafting and the distilling and the product yeah. formulating and the labeling. And uh, it just, <laughs> it's a long list, right? So it's nice when, um, when you, you can afford to get help and, uh, and, and that just grows in itself into the yeah. next chapter. I mean, it must yeah. be really um, thrilling in a way to now also be providing like income opportunities for other people that are wanting to work with you and that share your ethos. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it really is amazing. And um, our kind of our dream, um, because we won't always be living in a bus, like uh, we're thinking of having a family in the next few years. And, uh, you know, these things, I don't, we don't really see ourselves living, you know, really mm -hmm. far out in the woods in a bus, uh, for example, but, um, but we will have like a homestead somewhere in the wilderness. And um, we're looking at having a, an off grid facility where we can um, create our products uh, there and then um, also work with the government um, with different programs that um, allow us to use the clippings from harvests and um, if they're brushing for example mm -hmm. um, we can use the clippings of the spruce and just work in a sustainable manner with um, just different different people in the industry as well because uh, I know that that is one thing right how do you scale a business that relies on wild 
and unpredictable plants. So yeah. Oh my God, I can't, I can't wait to see what you guys do in the future. It's absolutely a privilege to be able to follow your journey and, and see what you're doing. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out. And I know it was early for you. <laughs> um, early morning. Yeah, it's truly a pleasure. I, I can hardly believe that I'm here speaking with you. <laughs> when just a few years ago, I was a student and, you know, this was all a dream. And, uh, you know, it, these were notes in my paper and, you know, it's just really, really mind blowing how if you work really hard at something and you, you really vision it and you can, you can see it and you keep working, how, you know, good, good things happen and, and dreams do come true. <laughs> yes. Yay. It's a wonderful example of this. And I hope that everyone who watches this interview feels very inspired to, um, make their dreams come true. So thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story with us. Thank you so much for having me, Gemma.